In West Africa, the mother would pound a little bit of rice every day to prepare the evening meal. It was a, it was an art form. It was a skill. You could be proud of it. You then found yourself doing the same thing. You're growing rice, but now it's completely different. Lee boy, I call you. Oh, Lee boy. Lee boy, I call you. The sound of the pounding of rice in Africa was the sound of domesticity, uh, but the sound of pounding rice in South Carolina was the sound of exploitation. Well, the more money that the white elite made, the more it was in their interest to make the slave system a kind of invincible fortress that would perpetuate the uh, comforts of the few. And so the incentive was, for those who ran the society, to set up extensive policing systems A slave, a slave, especially under these circumstances, wants to survive, wants to be free. And it also doesn't take much imagination to understand the anger of being enslaved, of being held against your will, seeing your loved ones subjected to treatment that no human beings ought to experience. The first time, your punishment was whipping. If you ran away a second time, there would be an R branded on your right cheek. The third time, one of your ears would be severed, and another R would be burned onto your left cheek for runaway. And if you ran away a fourth time, if you were a man, the punishment was castration. Gruesome punishments that had been familiar in England were exaggerated in the slave society. The planter had to calculate that I can punish this person even if they die. I can import new people from West Africa, and I'm making so much money in this process that I can afford to do it. The inhumane treatment says a lot that indeed they're resisting their enslavement, that like any other human being whose rights and, and opportunities are being taken away, that they, they're going to resist and fight back. Burning down barns was something that occurred regularly and increased during harvest time when the workload was heaviest. Poisoning could not be caught readily, and it was often something that was feared by whites even when it didn't exist. One symptom of their fear was that there was a law that white men had to carry guns when they went to church. Sunday was the only day off for enslaved people. And so people, the white folks, feared that the uprising, if it ever came, would happen on Sunday when all the whites were gathered in church. Therefore, the white men were required to carry their guns to church. It was on a Saturday night, September 1739. It was a work crew. Many of them are Angolans, including a man named Jemmy, who becomes the leader.
The fated Sunday finally came on the Stono River, southwest of Charleston. And they got to a store and broke in and they killed a Mr. Hutchinson. Decapitated him and put his head on a pole and cleared out his store of guns. It happens in harvest time, which is the time when blacks are being worked the hardest. It also happens in malaria time, and there is an epidemic going on in Charleston, which has virtually shut down the town. They must have realized that they couldn't possibly take over the area and drive out the, the Europeans. But they did recognize the possibility that if they took common action as soldiers, they might be able to escape. The governor of Florida had already issued a decree that any African who was a slave who made it to Florida would be free, and there was indeed a colony there of ex-slaves. There is this African manned fortification, and when the Stono Rebellion breaks out, it becomes clear that what these people are trying to do is to reach Fort Mose. People begin to join them. They burn successive plantations, kill some of the white people living there. Uh, draw some of the blacks with them. Others are afraid to join in and refuse to go. But unfortunately for them, they meet the lieutenant governor riding north. They gave chase to him, but he was able to sound the alarm, and then of course a sort of a, a posse is formed, and they set out after this group of Africans. It's an amazing moment. If they had been able to take him hostage, who knows what the dynamics would have been. These people are pursued south for a day or two. If they had been able to go another 24 or 48 hours so that more people could have joined them, their strength would have been greater, and who knows what the prospects would have been. And the whites came on them they surrounded these men and they fired on them. A lot of them were scattered, many of them were killed. Some of them escaped into the swamp, but those that they did capture, they chopped their heads off and put their heads on poles leading out down uh, what is today US-17 out of the Charleston to send a message to the other Africans. This is what will happen to you uh, if you rebel. After the Stono Rebellion, all of the separate laws governing slavery were consolidated into a single code. This black code restricted the movement of black people and regulated almost every aspect of the lives of the enslaved. The crushing of the Stono Rebellion was a tragedy. To me, these people were freedom fighters. Someone like Jemmy, newly arrived from Angola, is able to show others around him that this is not the only way to live. This can change. It may not change this time, but it will change in the future. Under the most inhumane conditions that you can possibly imagine, people were able to maintain their human dignity. It gives you some insight into the resilience of the human spirit, that it is possible for human beings to make the decision, I will not be defeated. Next time, America's thriving colonies are heavily dependent on slave labor. Slavery was an extraordinary goose that laid the golden egg. The war for independence brings the enslaved new hope. For them, the revolution really was a freedom struggle. Is liberty in the air? The country that says to the world we bring ourselves into existence on the principle of human freedom is founded on slavery.
Experience more of the personal stories, triumphs, and challenges enslaved people faced at PBS.org. Learn more about the continuing efforts of enslaved and free black Americans to gain equal rights under the law. Hey, hey, hey. 